Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. We started just a couple of seconds early. I'm going to wait just a couple of seconds for everybody to get into our participation. And we are right at two o'clock. Thank you so much for joining us today for the SBA webinar. We do have quite a bit of information it looks like to be able to share with you. So I wanna get right into it. I want to um, remind you to put all of your questions in the Q&A box so that we can answer those for you. Reserve that chat box, please, for any pertinent information that we will have for you from our partners joining us today. And at this time, I'd like to introduce you to Adam Johns. He is the Outreach and Marketing Specialist for SBA for both Inland Empire and uh, Orange County. Adam? Hey, thank you, Shannon, very much. And good afternoon, everyone. We want to thank you all for joining us. And uh, thank you for joining our SBA live conference call this afternoon. As Shannon said, my name is Adam Johns. I am an Outreach and Marketing Specialist for the SBA's Orange County Inland Empire District Office. I'd like to start off just by giving a big thank you to SCORE, who is one of our resource partners. Um, they've been with us since the start of the pandemic, helping to host these conference calls. And we very much appreciate their time and efforts in helping our small business community. Um, today, our goal is to bring you the latest uh, information on some of our COVID-19 relief programs as well as uh, the bulk of the presentation, which will be focused on our core lending funding programs from the SBA. Uh, we'll be led today by Ronald Galati, who is our lender relations specialist. And we have special guests today from Ampac Business Capital. We have both Richard Pallet Jr., Senior Vice President of Community Lending, and Jaime Rodriguez, who is a business develop officer for Ampac. And I'm business development officer, I think I said that right, for AMPAC. So they will be joining us to provide some lender guidance uh, about um, concerning the funding process and the different funding programs. Um, as Shannon mentioned, please put all questions that you may have, please type them into the Q&A box. Our team will try to address as many questions as possible throughout the program. We'll also be taking some questions from the Q&A box to answer live at the end of this session. Um, the chat box will be uh, reserved for useful wow. links and information. So again, please put any questions in the Q&A box. And before we begin today, I would like to turn it back over to Shannon Jones. Shannon is the senior admin for the Inland Empire chapter of SCORE. And Shannon's just going to share a little bit about the resources that SCORE can provide your small business. Shannon, if you're ready. Thank you so much. Adam Score has been a partner with the SBA since the early 1950s. We service the community in two ways. We provide workshops that are at a low or no cost to the public that focus on business topics that help you do business better. And then the other way that we service our community is through mentoring. Um, our mentoring is one-on-one -on -one with individuals who are subject matter experts and retired executives in their field. These are mentors that work with you one-on-one -on -one for the life of your business, and it is always free for mentoring with us. Our homepage is score.org. The chapter that I represent is inlandempire.score.org. You can find us here. You can find a mentor or take a workshop. And before I sign off, I do want to point out that we have some really great workshops coming up. Of course, we have all of these SBA calls that we are on today. You can find those on our website, but we also have a Grow with Google series where we're talking about Google Ads, presenting a um, presentation deck, and then also things like YouTube, being able to use, use YouTube to expand your business reach. I'll be putting those links in the chat for you. Um, thank you so much. And I'm gonna turn it back over to Adam. Thank you, Shannon. And with that, um, as Shannon mentioned, we have a lot to cover today. So we will turn it over now to Ronald Galati. Again, Ron is the Lender Relations Specialist for our SBA's Orange County Inland Empire District Office. And Ron, if you are ready to go, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Ready to go. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Shannon. And we're going to talk more about Shannon's services as we go through this presentation because they are an invaluable resource as you we go through the standard programs and trying to learn, have you learn more about them. But then that next step is getting even closer to those, that information. So with that said, we welcome our guests, uh, Jaime Rodriguez, our business development officer from Ampac Business Capital and our senior vice president there of, in community lending. Uh, Richard Pal Palais, if I got that right, Richard. And again, yes. welcome. 
And the way we're going to do this, we're going to have the update um, programs, COVID-19 programs, then we're getting into the standard uh, programs, standard SBA loans and services. And in during that presentation, we're going to have um, AMPAC uh, share their thoughts interactively or as we go through that. And then there's going to be a separate section that uh, AMPAC's going to have as well. So, and then we'll do the Q&A. So hopefully we get all that in. I will talk a little bit fast. I hope I'm not sound like the Federal Express advertisement uh, guy, but uh, let's give it a shot. So our schedule, as I mentioned, well, we did the intro already um, with SCORE and uh, now we're into the uh, summary of the update of the COVID relief programs. Adam and I will work together on that. The SBA standard review program overview, I will lead that, but we'll have uh, participation of our guests. And of course, then that section uh, focused uh, by uh, focused on AMPAC business capital and what they can bring to the table in terms of these insights on our programs. And of course, the question and answer. Again, thank you for joining us. So this is our summary of elite programs you've seen before, if you've been attending these sessions. Um, not a lot has changed. Actually, uh, we're gonna go through just a brief update of some of the information we'll see um, in terms of uh, the grants that have been issued and uh, those restaurant revitalization fund awards, et cetera. But I wanna lead off by saying PPP, as we all know, is closed. Uh, we're in the last throes of funding right now. There is a possibility you could still be funded till the uh, 30th but it would be all where you already approved and you're gonna be able to find that out, the status on that only through your lender. We do not have that information in the district office. So if you're anxious about that, uh, please contact your lender. If you can't reach your lender, you can contact me. I'll try to find that person that might hopefully uh, give you the answer you're looking for. Uh, with that said, one thing I do wanna point out is just today we learned that there is, SBA has announced a lender, uh, there's three, two lender forgiveness options that'll soon be in place. Expectation is next week. For those um, that are wanting forgiveness with loans up to 150,000, so those would normally that would use the S form, and it's a revenue reduction score, which the again a lender has to opt into this, but this will be an easier way with certain criteria they enter in to see if you meet the revenue reduction score, and then it's a pass or fail. The other key thing is there's going to be an SBA Direct portal to allow uh, you as borrowers to go in and put your information in. The lenders will then to do the determination. But again, it is contingent upon um, the lender opting in. So learn more about that as we go. Again, economic injury disaster loan, if you, if you uh, haven't taken advantage of this, there's quite a bit of money there. It's about $250 billion still in the account there. And uh, for, again, working capital needs, it is a true loan. So um, with that in mind, you, you all have amortization of 30 years and very a low interest rate at 3.75%. Targeted idle advance rides along with that. We'll get a brief update on where we stand. Uh, Shuttered Venue Operators Grant is ongoing. You can still apply for that program. There's a el new eligibility guide that's come out. We'll mention that briefly. Uh, but that program has uh, been continuing to award the grants. Restaurant revitalization, uh, we're full up on that in terms of out the funding. We have all the apps we have. Uh, we can possibly use, uh, fund, and that's on process now. And in addition, uh, you know, there's obviously a pot potential of something coming downstream through Congress, but we haven't seen anything yet. And the SBA debt relief uh, has been, last year we've been able to take care of um, payments of six months for many of you and had 7A, 504 and microloan program uh, payments, uh, loan payments. And likewise, this extra, this additional three and a half billion allowed that continue to some degree this year. I, the important point there I wanna make is for new loans going forward, we're gonna talk about the standard SBA products for 504 and 7A loans going forward. Uh, if, if the loan is approved through September 30th of this year, SBA will provide three months of relief, principal and interest payments. Um, so that's hopefully that's really good news. In addition to the temporary modifications, including um, the most notable being uh, the fees being waived again on those 7A and 504 products, um, that could be two to 3%. So a lot of reasons, if you're ready to get in that mode to expand your business, uh, this is probably a great time to do it. Again, that program's through September 30th. Community Navigator Program, not spent a lot of time on this, money is set aside. Various organizations throughout our community are bidding to um, get some of this funding so they can extend their services to you. And we'll make you aware of who they are and what those services are as soon as that application, or those applications are gone through the process, which ends uh, the 23rd is the application, then we'll do the review. And we'll hopefully hear something on the, the uh, September, October timeframe on that program. So Adam, if you take us away on a brief update on some of these programs. 
Thank you. Sure. So real briefly, uh, we'll just go over some of the numbers and where we're at with some of these COVID-19 relief programs. And we'll start with the COVID-19 Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program. This program, unlike PPP, this is still open. Um, it does not offer forgiveness the way PPP does, but if your small business needs working capital and you were operating prior to January 31st of 2020, you may qualify for this program and it can provide working capital for your business with very favorable terms. Uh, we've already approved 3.8 million loans for roughly $217 billion. The program still has about $200 billion in it or a little over that. So definitely something to check into if you need additional funding for your business. This is one avenue that you may qualify for. Uh, next, Ron, we have the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant. This was a program that is also still open. Uh, it provides grants to uh, entertainment venues, performing arts centers, movie theaters, museums, uh, music halls, things like that. A lot of money on the table for this one as well. We've already approved about or already awarded about 9,000 grants for $6.8 billion. Um, California is so far leading the way with over 1,200 grants in our state and about $959 million. New York a little ahead of us in terms of money, but not quite as many businesses receiving it. But again, this program is still open. So if you fit one of those categories, um, definitely take a look at this program. It's a little more complicated to apply for, but can yeah. be worth your while. I'm sorry, Next. I passed up that quickly, but there's an eligibility matrix that they can find on our website. Just It just was added. So it might help you determine if you're eligible or not. Absolutely. And the website is the best place for information on this. There's a lot, including a pre-application checklist, um, FAQs to help you determine if you're eligible. And like I said, it is a little more complicated with this program, but can definitely be worth your while. And next, we have the Restaurant Revitalization Fund. Uh, this program, unfortunately, is currently closed. This was a grant program that was really aimed at helping those businesses who serve food and beverage, so restaurants, food trucks, bars, uh, things like that. Uh, unfortunately, the demand for this program was much greater than what was available. We received 278,000 applications representing over $72 billion dollars. The program originally only had 28.6 billion, so the money went fast. There is still an, a Restaurant Revitalization Replenishment Act that is garnering support in Congress. And if that does get passed and get signed into law, it should provide an additional $60 billion for the program. So we would hopefully be able to restart this program and everybody who is in-house um, who's eligible should receive funding. But as of right now, the program is closed. So definitely keep your ears open for that one. And with that, Ron, I will turn it back over to you. Okay, thank you very much, Adam. Uh, the uh, key places, as, mentioned, as Adam mentioned, to get to these, this information is sba.gov. Click the red, the red button here and learn more and you'll see all those programs populate. A lot of good detail there. Uh, you know, any questions that you have, you, we can try to answer those as part of this presentation, but we're doing an idle uh, target advance presentation tomorrow and a forgiveness on Thursday. So uh, we got a lot, of, a lot of space to cover during that period as well. But again, most of the information is here. I think we uh, certainly want to acknowledge our side, Orange County Indian Empire SBA website. If you can, if you go to uh, Google, search SBA Santa Ana, you'll find the link, click that link. You'll find some good information here. I, I think you'll find it valuable. We have an office directory, all of our information's here. If you need to contact us, email or telephone, the SBA uh, resource guide. I'm gonna highlight that, I'm gonna talk about that today. It's a great tool, it's in the English and Spanish to learn more about what we do. It's gonna talk more about these programs and how to pro go through the loan process if, you, if you're looking for a, a standard a loan product. Uh, with that said, we continue our presentations. Um, as I mentioned, uh, this week, next week, we're going to do a kind of the same basic core uh, with uh, tomorrow being economic injury disaster zone target advance. Please stay tuned. All of these start at two and forgiveness will start at two as well on uh, Thursday. Uh, and, you know, we're trying to do like inviting MPAC on this particular series of standard SBA loan programs is to get uh, you know, their, their, their feedback, their insights on, on you know, what, what program should you use, uh, what the application process is like in the underwriting. So we're glad to have Ampec here to do some, to add some of that insight. And another workshop we have coming up on the 26th is for those, you know, you're buying for that, those big contracts out, those government contracts, not even the big ones, but the small ones, 
there's going to be a lot of them. As you know, infrastructure is going to kick in soon. And uh, so take advantage of signing up for that August the 20th, 26th, and then learn how you can go through that certification, the certification steps. Uh, the way learn more about any one of the programs and to get uh, the links automatically sent to you for these webinars, we ask that you sign up for Gov Delivery. And I'm going to ask one of our staff to paste into the chat box that sign up. And um, it definitely, if you do that, I think you'll find it worthwhile for you. Uh, please also follow us on Twitter at SBA underscore OCIE. So with that said, <clears throat> we're going to start this program. And as I mentioned, we're going to invite some comments from uh, the MPAC team. Uh, as we go through this. So, uh, and I will be going through it pretty quickly. So the expect expectation here is you're gonna retain some of this information. Hopefully something's gonna stick in your mind. And then again, we're gonna show the process after that. If we got those thoughts in your mind, how do you take it to the next step? We're gonna cover that. So just wanna basically say our staff is here. We're not a big group, but we've got some people that have been here for a long while and people that haven't been here very long that have learned an awful lot and are ready to help you. So uh, certainly this is our team. Alberto Quijada has been here for 14, 15 years. Christopher Lorenzana, probably almost the same number, number of years. Many of our staff are seasoned. And uh, like I say, we're anxious to help in many ways that we have done through the COVID-19 and through other standard offerings. Uh, our partners, just as we mentioned, SCORE being on, Shannon today, introducing what she can do, uh, what their team can do on online workshops and mentoring. Uh, that, so some of that can be done as well by small business development centers and the Women's Business Centers. We have Southern California Veterans Business Outreach. A lot of organizations there. You're gonna find that by going to our resource guide on page 11, seeing that and the contact information for them. And of course, as, um, uh, as Shannon mentioned, www.score.org and go to the office of your choice. Uh, loan basics now. So let's, let's talk. Now we're not talking PPP, we're not talking idle. We are talking our loan programs other than those special relief programs. So you know, SBA does not loan money. Uh, really, the, the lender does. So like Ampex, the folks that are lending the money. Now there is a case where we split on 504. We work together on those on those funds by issuing a debenture. But uh, basically, we're in, basically we're encumbered with or charged with being able to guarantee those loans. So if they meet our policy guidelines, uh, if you meet those policy guidelines, then uh, that loan can be guaranteed. And that's going to be a tremendous for the um, benefit for the lender because it takes a lot of that risk out of the equation. And they can go ahead and sell those you know, loans on the open market. They can take some profit. They can hopefully have that equity they all currently have to, to spread against more loans, to allow for more loans. So there's a benefit across the board for you and the lender to be able to have that guarantee. One of the key things about our programs is if you can go down to your conventional lender, lender your current lender, and you can get a loan, or, so unquote conventional loan, because you've got the credit quality, you've got the collateral, you've got experience in, in business. Uh, you know, maybe you're issuing for a conventional loan, might even be a better rate. But what we are is where we, where those, you can't meet those specifications for the lender, where your credit might be somewhat marginalized. You might have some other issues um, with the business, like a lot of startups, a lot of business, uh, you know, regular banks are very afraid of going down that road. But again, this is where we're going to, uh, we're going to assess, they're, they're going to assess you against the SBA program. Hopefully you'll, you'll be able to fit and you'll be able to get that loan. And our goal again is success stories that enhance our community. And we're going to basically do, uh, you know, as you know, obviously you need a loan, um, you know, you're going to be able to hopefully walk through with either SCORE, with, with AMPAC, and certainly emails back and forth with us on what do these programs look like. What are the terms? What are the down? What are the payments? What are a couple of injections? And how can I maybe maybe you need to sit down and actually go through it? And the lender will be good at that as well, you know. But I think uh, a good starting point would be for folks like Score any resource partners to try to get you a little more in tune to what the, the requirements of the lender would be. And now on size standards, uh, we do have a requirement. We're a small business um, administration, so. We do have small business uh, requirements for you. And I think um, there's a, a jump to the alternative. First of all, if you want to jump to the alternate size standard, it's basically 5 million in net income over the past two years. Uh, if the, you were able to do that or 15 million in tangible net worth, less than 15 million tangible net, less worth, net worth or less than $5 million net income over the past two years, you qualify on the alternate size standards. That might be the easiest one to get to. On the other one, 
You can go to the Code of uh, Federal Regulations. You actually can just type in uh, Google SBA size standards and you'll come to uh, the Code of Regulations. You'll search your particular next code, find either by size uh, in dollars of revenue or by size in employees if you qualify. You can also use their little bit matrix. There's a tool where you can go in and if it's not listed here in terms of your, some, some of these don't have a, a blank in these particular areas. So you go and get your next code go to your um, matrix, which is right on that same, uh, same link uh, and put in that next code and hit the enter button. Hopefully you're gonna find out whether you qualify. But again, defer to the Altner size standard if necessary. Um, eligible and eligible businesses. Um, this is kind of a, uh, just a brief outline. And like I say, our, I've let maybe our lenders uh, that are on the call here talk to more of this, but um, you know, you do have to be uh, a profit for-profit business. Now there, let Ampac talk to that with regard to uh, one of their other loan products, but be located in the United States, <clears throat> be an operating business. Um, you know, there are some key, key areas that we, you know, we just don't approve loans for, you know, if you're in some kind of business speculative nature, uh, you know, like real estate flipping, things like that. Uh, certainly if it's related uh, primarily to religious doctrine, uh, if there's, if it's relating to marijuana, it's still not legal on a federal basis. So uh, businesses that request want funding or SBA that have in business of uh, marijuana business and any, even indirectly will not be allowed to uh, participate. Um, now I'm going to ask Ampac to make a comment on this. Do they, uh, Richard or Jaime, do you want to make a comment on the eligibility with regard to this chart? No, you pretty much hit it uh, on point. Uh, those were some key uh, uh, points you made with the marijuana. We, we, we are seeing that uh, a lot. Uh, take it a little step further. Uh, you know, if you've got a piece of real estate in which uh, you have a tenant and that tenant uh, is in some way related, it could put your uh, loan uh, in jeopardy. So uh, very, very key point. Thank you. Uh, likewise, on, but as far as nonprofit, for a micro loan, that would be a possibility, though, right? On the nonprofit for select nonprofit. We're actually not lending to nonprofits at this particular point in time. Okay. Okay. So the other thing that we are cautious about and uh, we screen against are, you know, citizenship. You know, whether you know programs available to U.S. citizens and non-U.S. citizens per per the policy. Uh, again, I invite you, the lender, to to assess that, and then he will. Um, you know, the lawful permanent residents, certainly non-immigrant aliens living in the United States, um, every, those are fine. But, um, you know, again, we also have issues with financial assistance with those that have character issues, those borrowers who maybe they're on probation, parole, maybe they're in an indictment. Um, so some, as far as misdemeanors, those, those, there's remedies around some of that. Uh, but regard to felonies, uh, again, these are issues that would have to go through a process with us, screening process. And the lender is very familiar with that. So understand though, we are screening for personal history. Uh, any comment on that, Jaime or Richard? Yeah, I do have a comment on that. One, one key thing that I tell my borrowers is to, the application says ever, and ever means ever. Uh, someone might think, you know, this happened uh, 20 years ago or 25 years ago. And that could be is something related towards a bankruptcy or maybe, look, you were young and you got pulled over and there was a DUI or something like that. My uh, uh, suggestion here is always disclose it. If it's out front, if it's there, if it's known, if we you can document it and, and present it, uh, we've been very successful uh, with the SBA and, and getting those stories across. Uh, the SBA, at least the 504 program, which is what I do, participates with a lender. So it's also very important to uh, let that lender know exactly what's happened and finding a lender who can relate to that story. So, uh, you know, sometimes those conversations can be a little uh, intimidating. You know, no one wants to bring up something that could jeopardize the possible purchase the, of a building, but it's, I, I can't, uh, I can't uh, say how important it is to at least disclose it. The internally, we will pull credit like any lender out there, but the SBA goes a little deep, deeper and further. So something that you might have forgotten about it will come out, whether it was a, um, uh, a, uh, a notice of default or a ticket, you know, you pass the red light, all that stuff's out there. So um, it, it, it shouldn't be a deterrent from continuing with the application. Like I said, we've been successful with people who have bankruptcies uh, that have had uh, some misdemeanors, 
uh, things like that. We've documented there is a process as far as getting fingerprints and things like that internally, but it's not a deal breaker is what I'm trying to say. So uh, if the application says ever and you think something happened or know something, disclose it. It's the best way of going about it. Put it out there and it makes it so much easier, not only for us on the SBA part, but for the lender as well. Excellent point. Uh, true. Uh, get it up front, get it out there and let's see if uh, the lender can resolve it for us. With that said, um, let's talk about SBA loans and how can they help you. Just about everything you can think of, we can help you with on the SBA with the SBA loan. You know, whether you're launching a new business, um, you know, growing your business, uh, you, know, you need a revolving credit line, you're expanding your facilities, uh, some of the things that 504 might be perfect for, purchasing inventory, equipment or machinery, uh, that land, a piece of land or real estate you need for your business, and exporting. That's uh, part of our world too. We we have certainly uh, international loans that we do for your export business. Um, SBA loan programs, you know, we kind of group them in this, this listing here, but primarily the big ones are the 7A loans and the 504 and the microloans in terms of they're segregated out because they're different. Uh, 7, 7A the umbrellas, the express program, the veterans advantage, the cap lines, community advantage, international trade, export working capital, export express. So the, the so that's all umbrellaed under here, just se separate kind of, a, but they look just like a 7A loan. These are simple interest loans as you might have a car loan. You know, it's not, not anything that complicated. There's not any fancy math, math, math here. It's a simple interest loan. 504 loans, we'll talk more about those. They are more unique, but um, you know, I think uh, all in all, you know, there's a lot of versions of what 7A looks like to try to make it suit you best. Um, comments from AMPAC. Uh, one comment when you're looking at the 7A and the 504, the 7A is, is the go-to loan where we uh, can do anything from a debt refinance to uh, purchase or acquisition of real estate to maybe a, uh, uh, a partner buyout to, uh, you know, things like that. The 504 is more of a niche one uh, that is more geared towards uh, that individual looking to acquire or buy their own building uh, or, and also maybe financing large equipment. So it's, it's, it's more um, designed for that owner occupant to finally own their own building with uh, some really good structures and rates currently. And I think that's a, that's what I, uh, when I look at this and certainly when I was new to SBA, uh, trying to figure out what are these loans, how do, which one do, fits me? And that's some way we can give you some introduction of it, but I think it's going to take, you know, some work with uh, reading through the material, but you know, maybe maybe there's a score, uh, one of our resource partners kind of coach you along, and certainly your lender, whether it be Jaime or Richard, uh, kind of guide you. You know, if they they'll they'll be honest if it doesn't fit, they'll tell you, hey, it's not going to fit for this program, and uh, may, there's some other maybe there's another option out there. What's the one, seven eight? What one sorry. other key point, Ron? I'm so sorry. Sure, uh, okay. Is uh, you know you have many lenders. I'm sorry, many borrowers out there who feel that uh, 2020 was not a, uh, the best of years. Uh, it is a very uh, common conversation. Uh, lenders and uh, even the SBA have taken notice on that. Most lenders are looking for that cash flow to be strong the last couple of years. You know, we can get around that with uh, finding a lender who like Ampac will look at projections and, and really dig deeper as far as what the, uh, next couple of years look like and present it differently. So that shouldn't be a deterrent from someone saying, well, you know, 2020 was kind of bad. I'm very, you know, getting back to 2021 and, and, and things didn't look so great. It, it's not, we're not going to shy away from those transactions. Uh, we, we are in touch with lenders who understand that. And, you know, it's just a matter of building the story and the historical as well. You can see in 19, 18 and 17, the business was doing great and it was growing. And obviously we all know what happened in 2020. Then, then we can work around that. Thank you. So the seven, eight basics, um, again, was multiple purposes, like uh, Jaime was saying, as far as the seven, eight product, uh, term loan, it's a term loan, principal and interest payments, interest is negotiable between the borrower and the lender. But again, SBA sets some ground rules by virtue of its policies as what's the maximum you can charge. Um, prime plus 275 is where we're seeing, you know, you see loans with the similar to the term, you know, you, not a 12 month term, but a more, more of a normal five or 10 or 20 year. Note, so you're going to see uh, some some differences in that prime plus that that margin that's in there based on the, the the term and the size of the loan. But again, it gives you a gauge. So prime right now is three and a quarter. 
So you're talking about 6% interest if you want to get a gauge. Max, and that's a variable loan. Now, some lenders will fix that in. You have to know, again, know your, when you talk to your lenders, there are some of those that, <clears throat> some of them that will do the fixed, and that might be to your benefit um, if you're uncomfortable with the variable. Maximum loan amount, $5 million. The SBA guarantee, as we mentioned, uh, or maybe I didn't mention as part of the, one of the uh, temporary modifications is that is standard programs uh, are now at 7A are now 90% guaranteed. Uh, and then your express program is 75%. That's not maybe a, too big of a deal for you in the sense because it's not directly, directly affecting you financially, but it does allow the lender to be look at more, their credit box a little more broadly and certainly uh, helps them to sell off more of that asset uh, have, having the, for the capital they have remaining to be able to lend more, more um, make more loans. Um, and again, those fee, fees being waived, it's a big deal. Uh, it could be two or 3% of that loan amount. So uh, certainly take advantage of that temporary modification through September 30th of this year. And again, the gamut of what we do, what we, what we will finance is some of those listed here between new construction to working capital to anything in between. Comments on that? from our friends at Ampac. I will say, because we're talking about 7A to the audience, when you see 7A and you saw an earlier slide, Community Advantage, it is a 7A loan where the community gets an advantage because you'll work with a nonprofit organization versus a bank in this particular transaction. We will do exactly what Ron talked about. We can be more flexible because we are a nonprofit organization whose mission, if you will, is to provide the lending that you cannot get in the conventional banking space. And I just wanted to add, Ron, as I was listening to everything that you were saying, I want to say to the audience, as you're listening today, retain as much information that you can. And beyond listening and retaining, react. Give us a call. Let us be that first line of defense, that first place that you call before you even walk into your bank. We don't want you together, all of us on this line, do not want you to become discouraged or disenchanted about applying for a loan or disqualifying yourself when you haven't spoken to a professional that is not a bank. And I'm not um, being inflammatory about our banking partners, but the banks have more restrictive guidelines because of where they get their capital from. We're all working together along with the federal government to serve the citizens of the United States. Please make sure you check in with us first. Let us give you the guidance. Let us give you the encouragement. And because we're not motivated by the profits that are made on these loans, because we don't answer to investors, our objective is not going to be looking at your profile and saying, don't go to the bank, come to us. If we deem that you are bank eligible, we're going to send you either to your own bank or one of our banking partners. Thank you so much, Ron. Thanks for calling that out. It's an important point. So what is a 504 loan? So now it's basically a loan that's going to use to finance fixed assets for small business enterprises. You're going to see some great rates um, funded by Wall Street bonds. I know the SBA has a portion. We'll show you how that works with regard to the loan itself. But importantly, um, Ampac is a certified development company. That's bestowed upon them the ability to operate as such. Um, and uh, as such, they, they, they follow the policies that we have as well. And they're going to orchestrate these loans for you. So it's very important to be comfortable with who you're working with. Uh, and, and the process, you know, isn't a fast process. It's going to take some time to get through. Uh, you want to have someone uh, on your team that you're comfortable with, has some good experience. Ampex has been around for a while. Let them tout their, uh, their experience levels in a little bit. But uh, CDC is going to work in partnership with a third-party lender. So there's going to be a third-party lender. There's going to be the SBA's portion, which is we do on a debenture. Um, and then there's your down payment. So but anyway, the reason I point that out is a lot of coordination is involved making that happen. And that's where the CDC or the community development company comes into play. And these are the kind of projects we're seeing. And as, as Jaime mentioned, you know, it's many times it is a commercial use. It's owner occupied a facility, whether it's a self storage facility, a new car wash, you know, bowling alley, you know, these kinds of things that you would normally see it. And, uh, and they are big dollar items for the most part. And we've see, we'll show you some of the average loans we're seeing out there, but uh, uh, but again, and I think you'll see that there are also some great rates. Now let's take a loan example here very simply. You got a million dollar requirement that you need the capital to, again, your building, the equipment. Um, it's total, total million dollar, and it's not a special use facility like a, like a car wash or a bowling alley, which are special purpose. 
in not special purpose, it's going to be a split. The bank is going to have that third party lender is going to have 50% uh, of that amount. Uh, the SBA is going to have 40% and your portion down payment is going to be $100,000 or 10%. And that's trying to make it in simple. I'm sure there's more complications as you go down the road, but I'm going to let um, Jaime, I think Jaime has a few points on this one. Yeah, for the most part, the, the typical presentation is the one that we see here, 50, 40, 10. Uh, I'm buying a building, uh, general purpose, a uh, million dollars. I'm putting in 100,000, 10%. Uh, the key thing about that is you're saying to yourself, well, it's still $100,000. Well, when you're looking at a deal that's conventional, you're walking into a lender, that lender has an appetite for certain type of real estate they're looking at. For the most part, I mean, today, if you went in there, general, generally a conventional loan, they're looking at anywhere from 75 to 70% 70 loan of value. So if you're someone with a small business who's got a couple hundred thousand sitting in their bank account for working capital, I mean, what better tool to use where I can put a hundred and still maintain that 200,000 um, uh, for working capital needs. So that's exactly. the advantage here. That, that 400,000 on the SBA portion, once it's uh, paid off or once the SBA comes in and does their debenture, then it's, 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 uh, it's fixed for 25 years, which is also a huge plus because it's 25, 25, meaning that you don't have any type of uh, resets or, or it's going to be a, uh, uh, you, got, you have to you know, refinance it again in 10 years. And just to give you some insight as to what the rates are today, uh, for example, if you're loan funded in the month of July, that rate is at 2.81 on 25 years. Wow. So yeah, I've had, this is a rather dated chart, but, uh, you know, but as we know, the market continues, interest rates might kick up a little bit, but for the most part, they've been very much under control. And how do you find a rate like that in, uh, in, in the marketplace today? That's it's just fantastic. So uh, again, these projects range up to five point five million dollars. Um, you see how many transactions over five or five million, even over. Uh, and the rate is going to be established at the time of this bond sale. But we'll get all those complications. The important thing to know is that interest rate is super low. It's great, um, and uh, your CDC is there to make it happen. Put that that uh, together, and, to, and as we mentioned, right now, up to uh, September thirtieth. No, no, no typical fee is going to be on that debenture. No, no third party loan fee as well. So all this is going to help get the job done. I just let you know, and we'll just look at a slide. This has been a very busy program, even through the COVID-19. Uh, this program has been up in volume and, and understandably why. Well, one quick note on this slide here, um, Ron, for those seeing out there, they might be saying, well, look, I'm looking at a gas station or a car wash that's 13 million. Is this the right product? Uh, actually, it is. Uh, when we say that the uh, projects range from 200 to half, five and a half million or five million, it's really the debenture portion of the SBA portion. So for example, if you are purchasing some type of property like the one you just mentioned that it's 12 million, then technically our max is 5 million. We'd have to find a lender who would do that bigger loan amount with the injection. So the 5 million is not just the purchase of the real estate, but the amount that the SBA can basically finance. So you could be looking at project sizes in excess of 15 or 20 million. It's just the SBA portion will be maxed at five. Good point, exactly. We see a lot of, a lot of them over 10 million. Okay, so now we're, those are the two major programs, but under, underneath that 7A is this Community Advantage Loan Program. That AMPAC does offer. So um, I'll let them comment a little bit further on this, but it basically uh, is, for, is for the uh, non-bank lenders offering this program. Um, and I think uh, whether it be California, I know I'm not sure of AMPAC, whether they are operational in Arizona and Nevada, but this is, we've had loans that have been extended to those, those states as well from our district office. Um, we have um, the loan ranging from 20,000 to 250,000. And again, it's whether it's startups, existing businesses, expansions, you name it. Um, I think the key thing there too is rates where we're talking the similar, as we mentioned, the, the add-on of 2.75% to the base rate prime, talking somewhere in plus 6% range and the terms being five to 10 years. So in, I know you've, uh, you've just come into offering this, uh, uh, Richard, and uh, maybe you can comment further on, on this program. Absolutely, thank you, Ron. Uh, everything that you've shared is absolutely correct. We are following these parameters that you have outlined. As far as other states, Arizona and Nevada, uh, Impact Tri-State CDC, the Tri-State is the portion of our company that we will be one day 
have offices occupied in Arizona and Nevada and fully service those areas. But right now, if we need to assist the client, we can help them with our other partners in our space. Community Advantage, again, to remind the audience, is for those that are CDCs, community development companies that are authorized or licensed, if you will, to provide this lending as an alternative to your bank financing, which is your traditional 7A loan. And the rate structure that you put here, for those of you who are looking, saying, does that mean it's variable because prime does change? For us, it is not a variable rate. It is a fixed rate loan. It will be, uh, let's see, so when we think about prime 3.25 on the high end, you are looking at uh, 9.25. But can you get something as low as 3.75? You absolutely can. We can help you. Just depends on the entire structure of the loan. And the loan terms are running between five and 10 years as stated. Thank you so much, Ron. So on a sense of this, is there a, uh, from a credit score standpoint, is there some range that you could, you could quote, or is it something that really you have to put all of it together to really gauge that, um, that underwriting uh, success? Great question, Ron. We're actually using your own scoring system. I say you, not as if you own the SBA, but the scoring system produced by the SBA, which is the SBSS. So we are using that particular score uh, Typically, if your credit score, for those of you who may know your credit score, is anywhere at 640 or above, we can accept it. What we do at MPAC, because we are also a CDFI, that's a Community Development Financial Institution, if your SBSS score does not pass, we can look through our CDFI and do credit scores as low as 620. Wow. Excellent. Thank you. And then mm -hmm. collateral-wise, collateral you're going to search... You're going to see collateral for most of that range of loans there? We will see collateral, but here's what's interesting about collateral. Let me calm some of the audience who's thinking, I don't own a home. Uh, for us, what we're looking for when it comes to collateral, if a home is there, it depends on the loan size as to whether or not we'll actually take a second trustee on a home. Primarily, what we're looking for is the assets of the business. If they don't physically exist, then we'll just take what we call a UCC, a uh, Uniform Commercial uh, I forgot what the other C code. stands for. Code. Thank you. Uniform Commercial Code. Thank you so much, Ron. I'm drawing a blank. I don't have my video on, so you all can't see how old I am. But uh, <laughs> with that in mind, we do file a UCC, which says, you know what? Anything the business owns, we now own as a result of our making this loan. More than collateral run and to our audience, what we're really looking for is strength of character. Who are you? How have you been managing your life, your personal debts responsibilities, as well as your uh, business debt responsibility and your ability to repay? We're looking for your capacity. Can you repay this loan right now? We can't wait for your ultimate success that you say in your projections you will have to pay us. So we're looking for, do you have the capacity to pay us right now? Thanks, Ron. Great. And we'll look more at the five C's in a minute. As, as mm -hmm. Okay, so SBA microloans, uh, the one we've just been talking about here and there. Yes. Uh, yes. I think um, I'm gonna let you address this slide entirely. Um, Got it. Richard. Okay, uh, much like the Community Advantage loan, the SBA microloan, you'll notice the first, very first bullet point offered directly by nonprofit lenders, that is us, we are a nonprofit lender. We do lend between the ranges of 5,000 to $50,000. Uh, loans are offered to variable business, excuse me, viable businesses. So viability is we are looking at, and it says that do not uh, meet bank requirements. So yes, we're non-conventional. We're looking at your financial picture personally and individual, excuse me, personally as an individual and your business. You may have secondary sources of income that a bank may not consider because they're only looking at what income is the business earning. We have the ability to look into what's your secondary source. Oh, maybe this is a business that you're working uh, 20 hours a week and you're working your full-time job somewhere else 40 hours a week. Maybe you have a retirement planner. In other words, you have another source of constant income. And income that can be depended upon is as a part of the qualification and assists in repaying the loan. That income can be also the income of a spouse. Your spouse may say, you know what, I believe in the business, I don't wanna work in it, but let's use our income to help you qualify. We have the ability to do that. The uses of the loan, there are all sorts of uses. Working capital, just very quickly, that's a golf umbrella. 
a lot of uses fall under working capital. So inventory falls under working capital. Supplies falls under working capital. We break it down because we want you to understand there's many ways in which you can use the funding as long as the usage of the funding is for the business. This cannot be vacation, college fund, or I just need to pay off some bad debt. Rates, our rates do not run between 8 and 13. You'll actually be happy to know, ladies and gentlemen, that our rates will start at 3.75. They will not go beyond 9%. Our objective is to make sure we can get capital into the hands of small businesses so our profitability is not, our profitability of our organization is not based on the rates that we charge you on your loans. It's based on your, your repayment, the interest that we collect and then the banking partners that help us to ensure that we can get more capital on the street. Our loan terms don't go as low as three years. We actually start at a six years. We just make it one term. It's a six year loan. It's yours to have if you qualify. Post business counseling is required. Yes, we do want you to join partners like Ron and others that are on the line with us to maintain ongoing technical assistance training. We want to make sure where we can help you in the knowledge and understanding of operating your business and raise said knowledge and understanding. We're here to increase that for you because we want you not only to start this business, grow this business, we want you to expand the business. Add more staff, find more locations, benefit more community members. Thank you, Ron. Thanks, Richard. So just to give you an insight as through June, what our volume has been, again, I mentioned on a downturn year uh, for FY21 as a start though, we're, we're uh, certainly up uh, in 504, as you can see, we did 259 loans through June. That is our Orange County and an Empire office, uh, 290 million, 291 million. Uh, in comparison, we are up 50 compared to last year for 50, almost $53 million. Down on volume, on um, you can see that 70% of our loans are coming out of 7A, uh, 725 loans for uh, $704 million. And uh, we are down on units, but you can see we're up on average, because our average loan size has gone up almost $300,000. So we're running a range of about over 900,000 per 7A loan. So again, there are people out there being able to take advantage of it. Hopefully you can take advantage of it as well. And we were pretty proud of the fact that we, just like everyone in the SBA has goals of making sure we're, we're, we're handling, we're making sure we're serving the smallest of our small business and diversity of our businesses. So whether it's minority owned, where we've done in the not FY20 year, 40% uh, minority owned, 29% women owned, 2.4% veteran and 21% startup. Now that's, I think that's a healthy figure uh, for a brand new company coming into being. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to, you'll be able to fit into that, that pie. Uh, as far as uh, just a couple other things to kind of veering off the, the, so the really the loan world, but keep in mind that, uh, you know, part of what we do is also help your businesses with their uh, surety bonds. Uh, if you're going after government business, you know you most of the time will need a surety bond, and we will guarantee that, particularly if you're new in, in the government industry, a uh, government uh, contracting world, uh, you know, you've had limited exposure dollars, you have a limited amount of working capital, we can make that all work much better for you with our guarantee program. I won't get into the details, but know it's out there, you can go to our website and read more about it, we're doing a, a webinar on that on August the 24th. And then just generally, if you go under federal contracting, you're going to see a, much, a, bunch, a lot of services here, contracting assistance programs, whether it's um, the 8A, it's Hub Zone, uh, you name it, there's a lot of training that's out there available to you. We're actually going to do a government program, government programs webinar shortly, kind of introduce you how you can get, uh, uh, how you can learn more about what's required to get into government contracting. And then again, giving uh, taking advantage of some of the SBA programs. Other SBA programs, you're well aware of the disaster loan assistance. We have the economic injury disaster loan. That's one world, that's the COVID-19 world. But if you have, you've had a, a loan do, uh, a loan because of a fire damage or a hurricane, uh, we do that all the time. Uh, we're good at it. Uh, we, we, we're there on the spot giving those loans out. So, uh, you know, you do in a situation where you are in that, uh, situ uh, that uh, difficulty, you know that the SBA is there for you and have been there for you. Now, what's the next step in securing a loan? The way I, I like to look at it, I think it's basically five steps. Take that um, SBA res resource guide I pointed out, it's on our website, and take a read through it. You'll see some success stories. You'll see the resource partners on page 11. You'll see um, uh, you know, the explanation of what each of these loan products are and some of the things you're going to have to have in, uh, ready for uh, presentation to the lender. So uh, I think with that, 
with as a backdrop and what the briefings like we're doing today at some webinar, make your appointment at a resource partner, have them sit down and help you with your business plan, the financial documents. Maybe you want to talk, maybe instead you go to your tax advisor, financial advisor, someone to help you with that. And then ultimately though, that third step is important. You, you look at what, maybe you have a lender currently, maybe, maybe it's a Wells Fargo that's your big lender, but you now you want to look at something else. Maybe now again, CDC is a perfect example. Who can I go to? Get out there and talk to your lender about these, what, what you're looking for and see what, what they have to offer. And no, obviously you have, we have a list of F SBA lenders on our website if you're curious who they are. Just about any major lender is an SBA lender for the 7A side. Now search out and consider the non-funding sources as well. We have the Small Business Development Center. I'm sure I could have score point to you in the direction of where uh, cities, county, state government funding on, grant, on a grant basis is out there. It was more prevalent earlier on this year would have to you know, dig into that and ask our, our resource partners to help with that. And then take advantage of all these training sessions that we're doing right now. Uh, learn more, it's just gonna give you, again, you're gonna remember those three nuggets coming out of this and you're gonna take that and, and explore it. Like, like Richard said, be proactive with that knowledge, that motivation we hopefully will give you by virtue of this webinar, and take that next step. Uh, with that said, again, we talked about the Orange County and then upside, this is what our resource guide looks like. I'm just gonna get through that pretty quickly. And then uh, we have our local resource, which you will see in the resource guide. But this briefing will be, this presentation will be on our website. And I'm gonna ask that one of our, uh, our folks uh, on the call here will paste into the chat box where our box.com site is so they can grab a hold of this briefing at some later time and go through it again or point it to their, uh, maybe their uh, other business partner. With that said, I'm gonna turn it over to, um, SB, uh, they turn it over to uh, Ampac to talk about um, their particular offering uh, and their particular business itself. So uh, let me just start with this slide here and introduce you again, Richard Pele with, uh, as a Senior Vice President, Community Lending for Ampac Business Capital. And, um, and also we have uh, Mr. Rodriguez here, Jamie, uh, Jaime Rodriguez is here uh, uh, representing uh, Ampac as a business development officer. So guys, your turn. I mean, did you want to talk about the building? Because <laughs> I'm going to be talking about the five uh, C's. I don't want to do all the talking. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, my name is Jaime Rodriguez. I'm a uh, business development officer here at Ampac. I joined Ampac back in um, uh, February of 2019, so two and a half years now. I've been in banking since 94, started uh, as a teller at B of A, worked my way up, and uh, eventually became a commercial loan officer at a uh, Wells Fargo, and uh, here I am. So this building that you're seeing here, we just uh, we are doing what we preach. Uh, our founder and president Hilda Kennedy has uh, purchased her own building. Uh, we were not eligible for the SBA 504 program, but we are obviously uh, advocating to own your own building. So congratulations to her, and our team is just excited. So that's the picture there. Um, okay. well, hold on one second here. I get to the right the right chart here. While you're getting to the right chart, that building is right off the 10 freeway, Haven and Inland Empire Boulevard. When you get off that exit or if you're coming east, it's about three traffic lights east of Haven Avenue and Inland Empire Boulevard. We expect to occupy the building in mid-August, somewhere around the 16th or so. And our grand opening is September 10th. Please mark your calendars. As long as COVID doesn't rain on our parade, so to speak, we look forward to seeing you all visiting us on that day. Richard, Thank did you. you want to talk about what we'll be able to do in that building? I think that's important as well. Ah, awesome. Absolutely. In the building, we are happy to announce that it's a twofold operation in the building. We have our offices or all the good folks that you're hearing from today, Jaime and myself and our teams doing the lending. But on the opposite side of the building is our entrepreneurial ecosystem. This will be a state-of-the-art ecosystem for entrepreneurs where you could literally launch a building, from, excuse me, launch a business from our location. There will be spaces that will be for rent where you could launch a building from our location. There'll be an ideation area where you can meet and greet and talk to other entrepreneurs. There will be a SCORE, representatives from SCORE, 
representatives from the SBA, SBDC system. There'll be representatives from the women, SBA Women's Business Center. There'll also be representatives from Cal State San Bernardino that will have offices on our location. When we talk about support for our entrepreneurs and we talk about technical assistance provision, as Jaime said, we practice what we preach. These organizations will be there. I uh, used to say to people when I did presentations to audiences live, I would say the operative word here is free. The beauty of the word free, every time you say it, you can't help but smile. Our tax dollars are already paying for these services, so we invite you to come. Please take advantage of all of these free resources whose entire motivation is to ensure your success. See you at the building. Ron, did you want me to go ahead and start talking about these slides? That was the building. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, I got to the wrong slide here. But oh, no worries. Hold on one second here. Sure. So did you want to you want to just talk about? Oh, sure. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, just very quickly, you can see, you know, what we do in talking about the building. We talked about being able to launch and uh, work along with our partners and let's just lending. We have government back loans. So we've been talking to this uh, this afternoon about the SBA loans that we partner with banks on and loans that we originate ourselves. And do pay attention that the loans start at $5,000, but they can go up to as much as $30 million. Through our partnerships, we have the ability to assist you with that. All of our loans are not SBA loans. That's the CDFI side of of our organization with the Community Development Financial Institution. That's a designation we receive from the US Treasury. So that gives us the flexibility with uh, funding that's provided to us by banks to be uh, available for you to provide lending in a non-conventional manner again. And then our direct loans, well, that's working in conjunction with our banking partners. We can provide loans up to $14 million for working capital, inventory, business acquisitions. Come on in let us share with you how we can help you. Finally, the last part of this uh, presentation is the five C's of credit. For those of you who have not uh, heard of this expression before, it is how we are all governed and how we live, if you will. There's not a, an authority that says, I am the ruler over the five C's of credit, but uh, inherently built in lending is the five C's of credit. You may not have heard this before, so let's go through it quickly. I'm mindful of the time. It is 2.56. This is how we are reviewing you as an applicant. We, meaning the banks, the SBA loans that we want to do at AMPAC, uh, not the merchant cash advance lenders, the fintech lenders, but we who are operating under the governance of state or uh, government funding. We want to be responsible. So in doing that, we want to lend to responsible borrowers. The first C that you see on the left-hand side of the screen is capacity. As we talked about this before, the ability to repay. Well, how do we determine that ability? We're looking at your legal standings. We're looking at your customer base. We're looking at your management experience. We're looking at the strength of your financials. So we're looking at your ratios. We're trying to see where what money comes in and where does money go out through your business, through your personal life through uh, your crowdfunding campaigns, families, friends, and fools, right? Who is bringing money to you to help you in your business? How is it working? Capital, now we're looking for your capital structure. How much do you own? What do you have? Uh, what is the resources that are gonna be involved in this project? What is the expected gains and returns on this particular project? Uh, financially, where do you stand? Do you have investment products? Do you have high savings accounts? This is all capital. These are all sources that show us the level of uh, financial acumen that you've had, that you've able to amass this to get yourself uh, to the place that you are and able to work this business or start a business and repay the debt. We got to emphasize that. Collateral. In certain situations, we will ask for physical collateral. If you own a home and there's equity in that home and you're looking for some of the larger loans that Jaime will produce or the larger loans that I produce, he's he's the guy that can go up to the $30 million in conjunction with banks. But we're looking to say, what else, what assets do you have that we can lean against that if you run out of the ability to repay our loan, we can take that collateral and negotiate it to be able to receive our fundings uh, the return of our funds back. Conditions, is the business that you're in, is this the right time for another donut shop? 
Is this the right time for another pizza shop? Uh, when we think about all the different franchises that were opening and exploding and so many are closing now, not only because of COVID, but they were, the marketplace was overexhausted with those type of businesses. Is this the right time? Is this the right place? Uh, do you understand your competitors? What are they doing? What differentiates you from your competitors that we can believe that you will be successful? Um, Looking at booms and slumps in your particular industry, where were the high points? Where were the low points outside of COVID? That is an anomaly. COVID was something that we did not expect. Haven't seen anything like this since the early 1900s with the swine flu. So that's an anomaly. So in a normal world, in a normal business environment, what uh, will, how will your business stand? And how can you tell us how your business will stand despite what we see? If you say, but I'm different. How many people have innovated their businesses and more successful in a COVID environment than they were before this environment? Use your ingenuity, make sure you can speak to this, make sure you understand this and dig deep when you're really talking about your business and saying, despite the conditions I wanna do differently. And finally, it's character. Ron talked about this uh, and Jaime uh, mentioned it as well when it says ever. If anything has happened in your life that's been adverse, we all love, I shouldn't say we all, I don't want to speak for everyone, but I'll definitely speak for myself and fans like me. Marvel and DC, why do we love these franchises? We who do. It's because they're all about the hero's story. You had an adversity. You overcame that adversity. You found the strength. You found the superpower. You found other people around you that helped you rebuild, recover, and reignite. These are all character elements. This is the difference between us and a bank. We don't hold you hostage to your credit score, a system that was designed in some way to try to figure out how people are managing their finances. But beyond that, there's that person. What could you tell us about you? We are looking for your story. We wanna understand your story that makes us feel like, yes, you can be paid the loan. Yeah. That's my story. Thank you, Ron, I'm sticking well, to it. That's great, that's a great, overview and like i say the key here is going to be to have retain those nuggets of information know where you have to go next know the next step you have to take and don't ch over challenge yourself just take that one next step and with that in mind i just want to again thank ampac we are going to stick around for some questions i know we've already answered about <clears throat> 17 or 18 questions so if our team has a questions they want to pose to ampac or myself let's go at it now hi ron yes we have a question I am a business owner in Westminster. I own my own building. Can I get a loan using my equity of the building? If so, which types of loans can I apply? I, I can take that one. Um, the SBA does have currently the SBA uh, debt refi program. Uh, it would be a matter of looking at um, the current request. If the request involves cash out, uh, there are certain um, um, uh, equations that I have to kind of do to, to see how much we can apply for, but it is a very valid request. There's two ways of looking at this. One is if you're in a position where the loan to value in your current building is a, a fairly attractive, meaning that if your building is worth a million, you owe 300,000, it might be a better situation to talk to a conventional lender and maybe see what they can offer there. The reason that most people would use the SBA 504 program is because you could take that current loan that you have and maximize that amount up to 90% loan to value, something that most lenders won't do. So depending on where you are with the current debt on the building versus what it's worth and what you're looking to achieve, if it's a straight debt uh, uh, right in term type, type of situation and the loan to value is uh, 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 fairly decent, my recommendation would see if the current lender will look at it. If there's a request to maybe expand or add some tenant improvements or maybe enhance uh, computers or something to, to, to your business, we can look at a cash out and offer, and offer that debt refi program as well. But yes, it, it's, it's very doable. Thank you, honey. Very good. I have a question for you and it's, it's of a general nature and I know you probably addressed a little bit. As a home-based business and I'm seeking $80,000, what type of programs or loans which can you offer and recommend? Uh, since it's $80,000, I'll go ahead and answer that particular question to that home-based business owner. Come see us here at AMPAC. 
Uh, it, it depends on what you're doing in your home-based business in terms of when we talk about products. Is your home-based business something that maybe you can fund on a credit card and you could use a credit card? Not that I'm recommending that. I'm simply saying that's an avenue that you can choose. When you're talking about lending, however, which is a, it has an end date to it, so I always recommend try to look for lending versus credit extension. We can help you. For us, $80,000 loan, it's not where the business is being held. It's what is the business earning. Let us take a look at your financials. Let us take a look at what you're doing. Let's look at those tax returns. When I say financials, that's one of the things we're looking at. Because if you can repay our debt, we don't care where the business is located. It's just how well is it being managed? How long has it been around? How successful is it? And can you repay my loan? I can't emphasize that enough. Thanks. Yeah, it sure sounds like a 7A or a community advantage loan as a run one strong possibility. Absolutely, as a product. Yes, sir. Thank you. Great answer. And with that, Ron, I'm not seeing any other questions in the Q&A or chat box. Um, so we definitely want to thank everyone again for joining us. We realize we're just past the three o'clock mark, um, but we do want to thank Shannon Jones and SCORE for helping us to uh, host these calls. Ron, do you want to pull up our, our schedule for the upcoming calls? Sure. And then I just want to say, please, uh, if you would, um, Richard and Jaime, if you would paste your email in the chat box, should someone want to contact you directly with uh, questions we might be able, may not be able to answer. So um, that would be great. And again, thank you very much. Uh, looking forward to tomorrow, Economic Injury Disaster Loan. Again, it's that program now that PPP has done that can grab that working capital quickly. You have, I think there's some big advantages there, including low, low interest uh, rates and the target advance might also fit, but we'll discuss that in detail tomorrow, two o'clock and then forgiveness. Uh, everybody's about forgiveness these days. So mm -hmm. get that off your balance sheet and we'll talk more about that as well as the new program that's being launched with the SBA to try to help your lenders get that done. So with that, we're ready to go. And uh, I will say there, there's one more question Francis just asked in the Q&A box uh, about um, bilingual speakers and if there are uh, support for Vietnamese speaking business owners. I know our resource partners like SCORE, the Small Business Development Center, they do have um, consultants uh, who, can, who can translate into various languages and our SBA website can be translated and our programs do. Um, but uh, Richard or Jaime, um, if someone were to call you who needed a, a foreign language assistance, um, any thoughts on that from Ampac? I actually do uh, help in with a lot of the uh, Spanish speakers. So that's, uh, mm -hmm. you know, there's several of us at Ampac. Uh, as far as other languages, I'm not sure who else might uh, speak a different language at Ampac. Okay, and so for that, Francis, I probably, you can see Ron pulled up our slide for our resource partners. Now these yes. again are our uh, our partner organizations who receive federal funding so that they can provide free consulting advice, guidance and mentorship to our small business community. And they do offer services in a number of different languages. So you might start with one of these uh, organizations for consulting who could help you put together your loan package and who could help you work with AMPAC uh, on a loan package. Yeah, and, and, if it, and if it helps to use my email, you can do that. And we'll try to hook, get you to the right party. So uh, uh, if you want to do that and ask for advice again, I, I know we have some resources. We just uh, recently did a little pro a program with Little Saigon Radio, and uh, there's a person in one of the banks up that way that uh, is uh, very, uh, very much into helping, um, whether across the diversity of, of um, the community. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll find somebody if that if that's something you need. And so with that, we will thank you all again for joining us. Big thank you again to Shannon Jones and SCORE for helping us host the call. Uh, Mr. Ron Galati, our lender relations specialist, as always, wealth of information. We appreciate you leading, the, leading us through these programs and coordinating them. And a big thank you to both Jaime Rodriguez and Richard Pallet Jr. from AMPAC uh, for your time this afternoon. I know it was a lot of information for everybody. Uh, but definitely reach out to us, reach out to AMPAC, reach out to one of our uh, resource partners, um, and we can get you assistance to help you get uh, some funding for your small business. And with that, I hope you all have a good afternoon, and we will see you again soon. Thanks, and I'm to serve with all of you. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Take care. You too, Ron. Thank you. You're welcome.
Thank you. Anybody else is still listening, I suggest that they all are on your calls. You and your team have been amazing. I've listened to a number of them, regardless of I already know the subject. I just really enjoy hearing the team share. It's great, great information. I hope there are still others that hear me saying that, advocating for our partners. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank, thanks for that feedback, Richard. Yes, sir. Definitely thank you, Richard. Always nice to yes. hear um, that we're making a difference because I know yes. uh, we definitely get a lot of the negative as well. So it's nice to hear the positive. Oh, yeah. Just call me. I'll, I'll be there to cheer you on. <laughs> I, know, I know what it feels like. And, you know, oh, yeah, I, I know. I've been doing this for 12 years in the nonprofit world through CDCs and CDFIs. And sure. I've heard all the stories, but I'm a huge advocate for the system that we all are a part of. Absolutely. So, all right. Well, so thank, thank you, you, gentlemen. And thank you. Um, we will definitely uh, hope to get you back on soon. I know Ron will have plans for that. So everybody have a good afternoon. I'll talk to you later. Thank you. Bye-bye now. Bye. -bye now. Bye.